you're a new subscriber, I do a little sideshow stud on our little Twitch channel, so come subscribe and I do a thank you for you. Woo! It's fun. It's nice. Yeah. I went to Disney World. First off, I don't like Disney. We went, and those motherfuckers in Florida, they brainwash you. Because I can feel it inside of me. Yeah, we laugh. That was fucking money I spent on this shit, but I'm talking about castle. Okay. Yeah, that I am. Get confused. Uh, so we're back? Yeah, same thing. Same, same couch. Uh, oh, my God. Fifi, you've been doing so many things. You're a production assistant. Uh, I saw. I saw careers over quarantine, I started working in production. I used to work for Secretary of the State, and then I would perform on the sign, and then I got fired from the Secretary of the State uh, during qu quarantine. I can't talk. Excuse me. It's been a while since we've done this. Yeah. Can I really shake off the cobwebs? I am. Yeah, there's cobwebs in my mouth. Excuse me. Yes. So the next production. My boyfriend. He is a camera operator. We've worked on Queer Eye. They filmed in Texas last summer. Uh, go watch it on Netflix, please. They're not here. I know. Whatever. We actually did a show for the Queer Eye crew. Oh my god. One of the worst shows we ever did. Yes. A drunk woman. I don't want to talk about it. It was traumatizing. Well, you'll talk, we'll see it later. It'll be a thing. Did, but... you, did you put the pictures? I had none from that night. Oh, fuck it. Why would I remember that night? What was what? Me? But we got paid nicely. We got paid nicely. We're going to move on because people are losing them. Yeah. Uh, I got tased in the face by the comedian Tom Segura. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know who that is, it was like the most exciting day of my life. Uh, okay, so he's a cowboy in this one. And then Fifi. That's just work. That's what I'm saying. Excitement. <laughs> it's not really exciting. Oh, there was such a crappy picture. I like zoomed in. I asked Paul Rubens what his favorite sandwich was. It's a grilled cheese. Wait, <laughs> you want to talk about shitty photos? Okay, so that's Terry Crews on the left, and that's Simon Cowell on the right. I auditioned for America's Got Talent, and then I was immediately told by a fucking clap, and then I was immediately told by a lawyer, don't tell anybody. And here we are. You can tell people you were on the show. But you may not be on the show, and it'll say what happened. So I will not talk about it tonight, but I will be fielding any questions anyone has about Terry Crews. Anybody? What size is that suit he's wearing? I don't know. He's a very tall, very, nice. very well-built man. We talked about shoes. I don't want to break the law. I'm moving forward. <laughs> oh, shit. That was it. Okay. That's it. And first, that was Phoebe and Dan's summer vacation. <laughs> No, we're gonna put this back up and we're gonna hit pause again. If you can guide me, is that it? Click it, click it. Oh Good. Okay. Right, now I don't really need to worry as much about the sound and whatnot, so I'm walking to the stage. Don't worry for me. Also, we've got a lovely merch table in the back, Trash by Bunny, and then three legged sideshow merch. Oh, really? The 3D printing? Yeah. Uh, I wanted some ears by Trash by Bunny. Uh, so go check it out. They're cute as fuck. They've got lots of cool stuff. <laughs> These are really. I'm trying not to. I'm just really happy to be here, folks. We fucking miss this place so much. Please, thank you so much for coming out tonight. <laughs> now, really quick. Uh, who has been to an awesome menagerie before? In the awesome manager before. Okay, so like, you all are concentrated over here. So, do you people have any idea what you're about to see? Yeah! <laughs> Good, thank you. And before we're going to put it before, we're going to get started with the weird. You all know what I'm going to do, you fucking people do. The usual. That's why we're going to gay. <laughs> Phoebe? Hold on. Sure. Oh, okay. She pulled the battery cover off. That's why I said what you were doing. On purpose. Everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who said no? This is Everybody can hear me. Fuck. What? No. Shedding the loop. Phoebe, dance for me. Yeah. 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 I didn't expect that to happen. This is working out way better. It's so bad, this dancing, but it's so good. <laughs> I'm like, y'all didn't pay for this, enjoy it. Exactly. <laughs> Can't chance it. I think, where did this dollar come from? She was dancing. <laughs> this is my dollar. We can do that like how I have you folks going. All right. 
This show is a mixture of... Friends, not holding both of them like that. This show is a mixture of magic, puppetry, the macabre, whatever you can find, uh, the strangest you have, we like to showcase it. Hey, hey, hey! having a microphone in the stage. <laughs> Let's open up with the weirder things. If you don't know what you're going to see tonight, this is a, a bit of a taste. Hold this. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. Go on in. Are you rusty? You gotta, like, <laughs> Stop holding them like that. <laughs>
If you're not familiar, people here are going to be famous. <laughs> I don't know, Leon, you fucking laugh. And now, for the person laughing about that, put your hands together for our next comic, Katie Houseman. <laughs> comics it's so much better you guys are happier you're nicer I don't know what what I'm doing in the comedy scene guys that's why I laughed at Dan saying we're gonna be famous we are not <laughs> we're trying we're trying we'll see how this goes tonight how are you guys doing so far I love it I love to hear that I got on this show because I told Dan I could swallow swords but <laughs> Really, I just need stage time, so bear with me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. A um, little bit about me. My name is Katie. Pronouns are she, her. When I'm on my period, my pronouns are monster, so just keep that in mind because you never know. I am wearing a dress, so you might know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm Jewish, which is fun. Um, I became a woman when I was 13, and I had my bat mitzvah. Thank you. Real woman in the eyes of Adonai. Thank you. Pretty cool for me. My boyfriend is also Jewish, but he actually decided not to have a bar mitzvah, so technically I'm a pedophile, which is it's a fun little loophole we have in Judaism. If you want pamphlets, I'll pass them out after the show. <laughs> I'm more of a cultural Jew than a religious Jew, though. So, like, cultural Jews are different because religious Jews study the Torah, you know? And cultural Jews study BuzzFeed articles on how to contour our noses into more Christian-like shapes. <laughs> it's not working, but I'm trying. Well, I am, you know? <laughs> Being Jewish actually is pretty lame. Hanukkah pales in comparison to Christmas, honestly. The one cool thing about being Jewish, though, is that I can half relate to Drake songs. <laughs> if you're not familiar, um, Drake is half Jewish. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, let me tell you, Aubrey Drake Graham, his dad is black and his mom is pure Jew. <laughs> I know, right? It's crazy. It doesn't make so much sense. It explains a lot about him. He has this song. It was a while ago, but you know, he's like 25 sitting on 25 mil. Boasting as he should. He made 25 million by the age of 25. But I guarantee you that his Jewish mom called him after that song and was like, well, cousin Saul made 30 mil in accounting, so... <laughs> Maybe you should step it up, Aubrey. I was like, my name's Drake, Mom. God. <laughs> oh, what else I got? Not my notes over here, is that it? 
This is why we won't be famous, guys. <laughs> Do y'all remember when Jeffrey Bezos went to space for like 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, a few months ago. Long time ago, it was a simpler time for America. <laughs> I actually didn't know that Jeffrey Bezos was going to space until my Alexa started acting weird. <laughs> Did this happen to any of you too? I was like, Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. And she was like, I can't. Daddy's gone. <laughs> I know. She sounded so sad. I was like, okay, Alexa, well, my dad left too, but I still do my job. You know? <laughs> no sympathy, no sympathy. No, I'm just kidding. My dad's actually awesome. He didn't leave me. Shout out my dad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> he would love that. <laughs> you guys are fun. No, my dad is cool. My dad is a boomer, but he's the type of boomer that is one day going to confuse the phrase butt dial with the phrase booty call. <laughs> it's really going to get him in trouble one day. He's going to go viral on CNN, and I'm going to be like, no, I knew it. Dad. He's so sweet though. He really tries to empower me. Like, do any of y'all these types of dads are so sweet? They're like, you can do anything, Katie. Believe in yourself. Girl power. You're better than your brothers. <laughs> Which really gave me a lot of confidence. But then my dad says stuff to me that makes me think he actually thinks I'm really stupid deep down. So, like, I was talking to my dad on the phone the other day about my car tires, as you know, dads love to talk about car tires, right? My dad could go on all day about my car tires. And he was like, okay, Katie, um, if your tires are ever wearing down, all you gotta do is take a little dime, stick it in the tire, and if the dime is sticking up, you know it's time for new tires. Simple enough, whatever. But then he decides to say this. He goes, oh, by the way, Katie, Roosevelt is on the dime. <laughs> and I swear, my dad doesn't just give out useless pieces of information for no reason. He definitely thinks that that's how I identify change. <laughs> like, what is he thinking? He thinks I'm at the cashier, and she's like, okay, honey, 125. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, okay, which president is that? Um, okay, well, they're all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Can I just throw a couple Lincolns at you? I don't know. Is that enough? <laughs> you can do anything, Katie. <laughs> Does anybody else use their mom's credit card based on how much she traumatized you in childhood? I feel so seen right now. Hey, high five. You guys are my kind of people. It's a great way to like get away with guilt-free spending, you know? If my funds are getting a little low and I feel like treating myself to a shopping spree, instead of staying home, I'll be like, hmm. Remember that time mom locked me out of the car in seventh grade until I fixed my tone? <laughs> I think that's worth a trip to Forever 21. Yes! <laughs> Maybe the Gucci store, I don't know, if I'm feeling crazy. I have great parents, guys, great parents. Um, does anyone here think that weed should be legalized in Texas? <laughs> I love it. You guys are cool. You're cooler than me. I'm still hesitant on the whole legalizing weed everywhere thing. I know. I'm so cool looking, you'd think, you'd think I'd be down with the, the marijuana. But <laughs> hear me out. I just think it's really important for high school kids to be able to tell who's cool and who's a loser. <laughs> The cool kids are willing to go pick up in the back alley illegally. The losers are like, no, it's illegal. <laughs> Do you guys want to take that debate away from high schoolers? Our entire social hierarchy will crumble if the high schoolers don't know who's a pussy and who's a big dog, okay? <laughs> I'll leave you with this, just another piece of news. Um, a hot air balloon crashed recently. I know, I know. 
uh, it's, it's sad, but I, I also think it's a little bit exciting. <laughs> because during these COVID times, isn't it nice to just have a few deaths here and there that you totally expected? <laughs> it might just be me, I'm 26 and suddenly all my friends want to go to New Mexico and take a hot air balloon ride. And I'm like, God, I need to check on my friends more. <laughs> Why are they getting in a birthday decoration? <laughs> Don't do it! You guys, you guys have been amazing. Please give it up for all the clowns you see tonight, including me. Show. We continue to do it and it goes great. Now, it's a win win. It's a win win. Our next performer is the loudest person I've ever met. <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> Louder than that, even. Yeah. You may know them in places like the internet. <laughs> a number of Renaissance fairs around the country. Which one are you at now? Scarborough? Scarborough. Yeah, because Scarborough. You got Scarborough. You got poop shit. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's go to Fair. If you want to see them perform live, um, I'm not going to make a joke that I was going to make because Katie made it. Now make, make some noise, please, for our next performer, Pipsy Pinwheel. <laughs> I'm 
take a moment to say how happy I am that I get to swear right now. Alright, some of you might get flashbacks to the island of Dr. Moreau. The 96 remake with Marlon Brando, Val Kilmer, Furious of Punk, Ron Perlman, and I got Harry Potter. Alright, here we go! Oh, God. Oh. This is also a great way to never be invited back to Denny's. I didn't know that they posted a photo on the wall. <laughs> My Florida accent. Bath salts! <laughs> Alright, some of you aren't completely convinced, that's fine. This is the entirety of my burn impression. This is. <laughs> Quit destroying my wetlands! <laughs> Bottle. <laughs> Some people get confused. Alright, I'm about to bring a balloon animal to life here in front of your very eyes. Who here likes balloon animals? You want when I'm done? Alright, let me know when you see the end. You ready? Yeah! that's not actually afraid of jump. Are you sure? Are you positive? Okay, I'm a pun! Oh my god, I love the bone earrings. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, I'm Zach. You can call me Gay Satan. Now, Gay Satan has agreed to this. Um, we're gonna bring back the lady in the trap. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Before I do 
what I'm about to do, I just want you to know that it's real easy to see how dirty it is in the lights. <laughs> Great. Even better. Please. I've never done this with liquid death. They don't pay me for this, but they should afterwards. All right, here we go. What I'm about to do is an amazing display of my acting abilities. Okay, it's not carbonated. All right. Ever just feel dehydrated? <laughs> Want to take a load off? Liquid death. Always have the logo facing out. All right. <laughs> Hopefully my box doesn't get wet. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to start crying or as some of you adults like to call squirting. Um, is there any volunteers to squirt? All right, gay Satan! Yay! 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 On your knees, they sell the test that CBS I hear now. So, here we go. I'm gonna look up, you're all gonna say action, ready? Sorry, I know, I'm premature a bit. <laughs> Blackjack team. 
Hell. 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 As well as the uh, consultant for Hasbro on the Harry Potter line of magic toys. They are Austin's strangest resident. Please make some noise for Brad Henderson. Hello, thank you. My name is Brad. I am not the manager. I've had four people ask me if I am the magician. Now, which is different than when I'm in the Northeast, because everyone asks if I'm the rabbi. And they at the gas station, are you a rabbi? And I say, no, I'm a wizard. And I love that because they just don't know how to process it. But I am a magician, and I'm looking forward to sharing some wonderful things with you. Let us begin with my favorite optical illusion. This is my favorite optical illusion. Watch the disc, don't talk about it, just watch it, keep your eyes on the middle of the disc. In a moment you'll notice three things beginning to happen. The first thing you'll notice is that the white and black edges, which were once solid, start to appear fuzzy. That's normal, keep your eyes on the disc. The second thing you'll notice is that the white part may take on a color hue. It may look a little orange or yellow. That's a reflection from the lights and has nothing to do with the illusion. Keep your eyes on the disc. What we're really going for is a tunnel vision effect. You should look like we're moving in or out of a tunnel. Now in a moment, not now, in a moment, I will have you look at my face, my head. Not now, in a moment. And when you do, it will appear as if my face, my head is shrinking, growing smaller and smaller and smaller. Watch the disc. Watch the disc. Watch the disc. Okay, look at my face. Yeah. Would you like to see that again? It's an electoral vote, the eyes have it. Uh, I will do it again. This time I will explain to you how it's done. Watch the disc, don't talk about it, just watch it. Whenever you look at an object, I don't care what that object is. Whenever you look at an object, you end up burning an image of that object on the back of your eye. When you look away, that image is retained for a fraction of a second, about one twentieth of a second to be precise. That's why when you watch a cartoon or a movie, it appears as if the characters are moving in a fluid motion and not a series of separate jerky photographs, which is what they really are. What we discovered is you could burn a moving image on the back of your eye, which is what we're doing now. We're burning the image of a spiral getting smaller and smaller. This time when you look at my face, not now, in a moment, it will appear as if my head is growing larger and larger, swelling like a balloon about to burst. Watch the disc. Watch the disc. Watch the disc. Look at my face. And that's my favorite illusion. Yay, magic! There are three rules in magic. Rule number one, never tell an audience what you're going to do before you do it. Rule number two, never do the same trick twice. Rule number three, never tell them how it's done. This evening, because you're all such good friends now, I will break all three rules. Including the big one, for not only will I tell you how this trick is done, I will teach you how every trick is done. From pulling a coin out from behind a child's ear, to making the Statue of Liberty disappear. And I will do that while performing a classic of magic, the mystery of the red handkerchief. So, I've told you what I'm going to do before I do it. I will do the trick twice. I will tell you how it's done, the mystery of the red handkerchief. Now, my favorite thing about being a magician is seeing how different people respond to the performance of magic. For example, right now, I would say about 10% of you are looking at the hand which is now in my pocket. These people have trust issues. <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> I'm joking, we know, we know. Watch closely. The mystery of the red handkerchief. All I do is wave. In my hand is now an egg. The handkerchief jumps to my pocket. Now, this is a pretty good trick 
But it's a great trick because it allows me to explain the three biggest secrets in magic. Assumptions, expectations, and the importance of staying a step ahead. Let's start with the first secret, assumptions. Fill in the blank. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, octopus. <laughs> Did I say I was doing the alphabet? No. no. But you, being intelligent people, saw a pattern that you recognized, and you filled in the blank correctly. But my pattern was not the alphabet. My pattern was seven letters and an invertebrate sea creature. H-I-J-K <laughs> elemento squid, that's just the way I roll. <laughs> you see, the magician uses your assumptions against you. That's why the easiest people to fool are smart people and people paying attention. The hardest people to fool? Drunk people and stupid people. <laughs> and I've worked nightclubs in Oklahoma, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can tell that joke, my girlfriend's from Oklahoma. <laughs> she doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if she sees the tape, neither will I. This trick is based on two assumptions. The first is that this is the same handkerchief with which I began, it's not. The second is that this is a real egg, it isn't. It is a hollow egg into which I shove the first handkerchief, into the handkerchief, and with just these two assumptions, I can fool almost every intelligent person in the room, especially when I add the second secret, expectations and the management thereof. Notice as I perform the trick, I always refer to it as the mystery of the red handkerchief. This puts your attention on the scarf and you aren't looking for other things like, oh, I don't know, hollow wooden eggs. Also notice that when I do the trick, I never say the handkerchief disappears. That's too impossible. You might ask, where does he go really? Instead, I show you the second handkerchief. And when you see the second handkerchief, you stop looking for the first one. Of course, this is when people ask Brad, what if we were right next to you? What if we were behind you? What if we could see the handkerchief sticking out of the egg? Well, then I'm busted. <laughs> Unless you remember the third secret, the importance of staying a step ahead. Remember at the beginning, I said all you have to do is wave? All you have to do is wave. And that is how you break the three rules of Now, I am a magician, and I'm fascinated uh, of, uh, with magic as an art and as a reflection of culture. And whenever I talk to groups, I always like to ask the same question. I ask, what do you think of when you think of magic? And I always get one a handful of the same responses, right? Abracadabra, sawing a lady in half, pulling a rabbit out of the hat. And it's not surprising people think of the bunny. Because magical animals have been part of our history since the very beginning. In 3500 BC, the West Card Papyrus tells the story of Denny of Dead's nephew. A magician who cut off the heads of a goose, an ox, and a duck before restoring them back to life. This act was performed many years, I will add, before the formation of PETA. <laughs> You've heard of PETA? Pharaohs for the ethical treatment of animals? <laughs> I spent far too much time on that joke for that to get as little response as I could. I mean, I had like follow-ups like what would an animal rights campaign in ancient Egypt look like? Would you be walking along the desert at your emotionally lowest and somebody throws up a giant hieroglyphic with a starving Anubis chained to a pyramid as Sarah McLaughlin plays in the background? Anyway, there's a point. All too often, we fail to treat our animal co-stars with the respect they deserve. Which is why I prefer to think about the ones we treated like royalty. Maybe you've heard of them. Munito, the dog with the brain of a human. This was a canine so clever, he could answer the most obscure trivia questions by picking out cards with the correct answer written upon them. Or Ferdinand the Genius Pig, a porcine oddity so wise, he could solve the most complex of algebraic equations with a combination of grunts and snorts. Magical beasts continue to amaze us to this very day. This evening, I am proud to present the culmination in a long line of these amazing creatures. An animal of which I'm doubly proud because not only did I train her, but I raised her myself. Aww. <laughs>
Please give a three-legged dog welcome to the one, the only, Bessie, the clairvoyantly telepathic, card-picking dog. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm. There are a couple people in the back who are worried this act isn't all it's quacked up to be. <laughs> but I assure you, you're in for a truly excellent time. <laughs> Don't give me that. Don't give me that. We'll tell that joke tomorrow. Now, for this demonstration, Bessie and I require the assistance of three brave volunteers from the audience. We need people who are both confident and competent with a pack of cards. What does that mean? That means you know the difference between a diamond, a club, a heart, and a spade. You're not going to get up here and say it's a putty on foot. And if asked to hold, cut, or shuffle the cards, you could do so without too much psychological distress. Do I have three volunteers, or must I go out amongst you and pull you from obscurity myself? Uh, how about the gentleman here on the far end there? I know uh, you very well. How about the young lady in the middle? I'm worried if she's holding up your hand or you're holding up hers. Was there a third in the back? How about this gentleman here? Give my three friends a big round of applause. <laughs> Let's see, we're going to put you in a line. Uh, how about, sir, if you would go to the end. Uh, young man here in the middle, young lady here, like most of them is sober. That's great, <laughs> sir. Uh, what is your name? Ashley. Ashley. Take a look at these. You can shuffle them up, make sure they're fair. A big round of applause for my three volunteers, please. <laughs> Each of my friends will select a card in an increasingly impossible manner. Bessie will proceed to peer into their minds and pluck out their thoughts. Lest the whales of skeptics drown out the approbation which is sure to follow, please note that Bessie will perform with the proceedings facing her posterior. <laughs> I would hate for one among you to accuse her of being a Peking duck. <laughs> now look, I don't care what you said about the first two jokes. That's comedy gold, and you're not taking that one away from me, all right? Woo! Look okay? Yes. Thank you. Good. What is your name? Ashley. Ashley. You looked at the cards, you saw that they were all different, that they're all fair. Yes? yes? First, a card will be selected in an impossibly fair manner. You saw the cards, you shuffle them. Mm -hmm. Ashley, you get to pick any card you want. And when I say you get to pick any card you want, I mean you get to pick any card you want. So I would go as slowly or as quickly as you want. Touch, just touch, any, that one right there. Look at it, remember it, don't forget it. Do you know what it is? Don't say it. Not that I don't trust you, but I do not trust you. Please do not yell out the name of the card. The duck is listening. Tap the card into the pack yourself. Take them, take them, give them another quick mix, just a simple mix, simple mix. Now let's take a moment to appreciate where we are. Tell me your name one more time. Ashley, Ashley. Ashley examined the card, she, she shuffled. She picked any card she wanted. She put it back in the pack herself. She's shuffling them now all the way over there. I'm not touching them. Yeah. Yeah. To find the card under this particular set of circumstances would prove positively perplexing for a professional purveyor of prestidigitation such as myself. <laughs> a miracle of monumental magnitude for a little wooden duck. Now it is possible, as you were shuffling, that you may have accidentally shuffled your card to the top or the bottom, giving the duck a decided advantage. So to be fair, is your card on top? No. Is your card on the bottom? Ladies and gentlemen, one card has been selected in an impossibly fair manner. Remember your card. What is your name? David. 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 It is possible, unlikely but possible, that Bessie has hidden a mirror <coughs> over in the wings and somehow saw Ashley return the card to the pack and managed to track her card as it jumped around in the spread through the various shuffles. Unlikely but possible. So that's not the case. You're going to merely think of a card, but not yet. Not yet. Here's why. Under the pressures of the moment, with everyone staring at you, when asked to think of a card, most people can only think of one of the obvious cards. Ace of spades, queen of hearts, one of the black sevens. I don't want you to think this is a case of psychological manipulation. That comes later in the show. You will select one at random. So clear your mind. Got it? Open your eyes. And say stop. See it? Do you know it? You got it? That is the card you're thinking of. 
Got it? Okay. Let's take a moment, a moment, not a break, just a moment, to appreciate where we are now. David is merely thinking of a car, right? You didn't take it out of the spread. You're the only person who knows what it is. So please do not forget your car, or Bessie will leap from her perch and pluck out your eyes. Proving magic truly is fun for the whole family. <laughs> it's an amazing act. You should see it. I mean, you won't. <laughs> but you should. Uh, don't forget it. One card selected in an impossibly fair manner. One card merely thought of, what is your name, my friend? Josh. Josh. Josh, you will select a card that will remain unknown to man and beast alike. How will you do that? We will use a different pack of cards. This one is blue. Could you hold the cards as if you're about to play a game? Yeah, great. Now, if I asked you, it was Josh, did I do that correctly? Could you take a small group from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top? Could you just cut? Yeah, great. Could you do that again? Now, Josh, do you think you could put your hands behind your back, take your time. Do you think you could do that again? Yeah. Put the hands behind the back so nobody sees. Give them another cut. Okay. Now, do you want to keep them there, or do you want to cut one more? Go on. Go ahead. Is that good? Good. Now, keep the cards behind your back. Take the top card, whatever it is, turn it face up, Josh, and slide it somewhere in the middle. So Josh is picking a card, but one that remains unknown to man and beast the life. Have you done that? Yes. Great. One final task. Return the cards to the box and make sure nobody accidentally gets a peek at the cards. Not you, not me, and especially not the duck. So, one card selected in an impossibly fair manner, one card merely thought of, one card unknown to man and beast alike. For the record, your card is not on top. Your card is not on top. You have no idea. Your card is not on the bottom. Not on the bottom. No idea. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of all identities, I give you Bessie the Duck. First, the card selected in an impossibly fair manner. Ashley, you examine the cards. Yes. Uh, you shuffle them up. You pick any card you want. You put it back in the pack yourself and you shuffle them. I never touch them. Correct? Yes. You shuffle them. Yes. Yeah. Don't give me an attitude. She's ready to jump. She's ready to jump. I will count to three. On the count of three, say the name of your card, then the words go Bessie Go. So if you pick four diamonds, I'll go one, two, three, you'll go four diamonds, go Bessie Go. If it was the king of diamonds, you one, two, three, king of diamonds, go Bessie Go. You got it? One card selected in an impossibly fair man. One, two, Three. Ace of clubs, go messy go. She dives into that. She pulls out one card and only one card. It is the Ace of Clubs. Give it up for Bessie. Thank you. 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 All the duck has to do is look through the cards, find it, take it out. Fair enough. So that's not the case. Don't say a word. I mean, you are thinking of a card, yes? You're the only person who knows what it is. Right? See it in your mind and send it to the duck. Look into the duck's eyes. On the count of three, say the words, go, Bessie, go. One, two, three. Go, Bessie, go. She dives into the deck. She pulls out one card and only one card. I won't touch it. You could have thought of any card. Yes? Yes. What was the card you thought of? King of Hearts. King of Hearts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Voila. For Bessie, the telepathic. <laughs> so, we've had one card selected in an impossibly fair manner. One card merely thought of. One card unknown to Manor Beach. You mixed up the cards, you turn one over at random, you don't know what it is, nope. I don't know what it is. Nope. The duck doesn't know what it is. One of the cards, 45 degrees this way, three more degrees, 10 degrees down, perfect. <laughs> On the count of three, 
What was that? I heard that. I've got ears like a room, and I heard this guy where he says, I know how the duck does it. She's got x-ray vision. <laughs> can see through the box. So that's not the case. Bessie will perform her finale. <laughs> It is at this point that the more observant members of the audience are asking themselves, how would a duck with x-ray vision be thwarted by a blindfold? <laughs> <laughs> to her, I assure you, it is as kryptonite. <laughs> On the count of three, say go Bessie, go. One, two, three. Go Bessie, go. She dives in the deck, she pulls out one card and only one card. Her grip is firm. Her eyes are clear. <laughs> You examine the cards, yes? yes? You mix them up. Yes. You picked one card and only one card. You turned it over at random. Inside the pack, there is one and only one card, heretofore unknown to man and beast alike. Yes? Yes. Was that fair? Fair. Give Josh a big round of applause. <laughs> selected in an impossibly fair manner. One card merely thought of, one card unknown to man and beast alike. Give it up for Bessie, the clown. Round of applause to Dan and PP for producing the show. And a big round of applause for the staff and bartenders here at the Please make sure you remember, just give them some money. So, Bessie and I have been performing together since we were 10 years old. That's not a joke. I've taken her all over the world. She gives me notes after every show. See, as a magician, we spend years working on the material we present to you. And after every show, I go home and I think, what could I do differently? What could I do better? And I've done that with every piece I've ever performed except for this piece. I performed this trick exactly the same way I did when I was 16 years old. And here's why. When I was 16 years old, the local magicians invited me to be a part of their big stage event. And at the end of the show, every person came up to me and they said the same thing. They said, kid, you were great. Kid, you were terrific. Kid, you were wonderful. Every magician except for one old man. He came up and he told me the truth. He said, kid, your suit doesn't fit. <laughs> After COVID, that is still sadly true. He said, kid, you're trying to dance on stage and you don't know how to dance. He said, kid, everything you say and do sounds just like David Copperfield, the most famous magician when I was growing up, and you are not David Copperfield. He said, but that little trick with the rope, the audience is like that the most, because in those few moments, you were just being yourself. Now, I'd like to say that at that moment, a light bulb went on and my life was changed forever. In truth, it took me about 25 years before that lesson started to really sink in. So every show I do, no matter where it is, I always perform this trick exactly as I did when I was 16, as a reminder that no matter where we are in life or for whom we have the pleasure to perform, there's only one potential path to success, and that's to try to be yourself. So before I leave, thank you for allowing me these few moments where I got to be myself for you. I like to call it the rope trick. I thought that was pretty good for a 16 year old. Now, every magician does rope tricks because there's so much to figure out. There's two ends, there's a middle, there's me. As you can tell, I take a good deal of space. So, to make it easy, we'll take the two ends, we'll tie them together, so all you have to do is watch the middle. Now, when most magicians cut rope, they use knives, scissors, or razors. But I, Brad Henderson, magical kind of guy, Use my two Ronco 1995 stainless steel magic fingers to cut the rope <laughs> into two approximately equal pieces. I said approximately. 
Fortunately, I ate my Wheaties this morning, so we can still do the trick with the two equal ropes. Now, you may have heard of Harry Houdini. It was Houdini who said, you can put me in the strongest jail, but you cannot keep my face from breaking out. <laughs> that one's for the few and not the many. <laughs> this is Houdini, I had a famous trick, he'd take two pieces of rope and tie them into handcuffs. This is Houdini as he begins to escape, this is Houdini after he gets free, I know how he gets out, how he fixes the rope, I have no idea. Because as I said, there's too much to watch, there's the ends, there's the middle, there's me, we'll make it easy, we'll get rid of the ends. So all you have to do is watch the middle. Of course, I fooled around enough, long enough, I might as well do the rest of the trick. So, um, let's get to the finale here. What is... Uh, what is your name, young lady? Ashley. Ashley, come up here very quickly. <laughs> quickly, quickly, quickly. Right there, right there, right fine. Co-star, co-star, not star. <laughs> Hold up your finger. Good choice. Sometimes they turn on me. Here we go. <laughs> Ashley Scissorhands. Oh. Yay! Thank you, Ashley. Be careful where you put that. And now for the part of the trick you've all been waiting for, the grand finale, as I take these two pieces of rope and put them back into one long piece, two into one. Watch. 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 It's not much, but it makes it tax deductible. If you work for the IRS, please know I know it does not really make it tax deductible. We do not need to have that conversation again. Watch as the two pieces go back and the one long piece of rope. Thank you very much. Usually my audiences are a little further away than you are. Like Pflugerville. <laughs> but this isn't just any knot, this is a magic jumping knot. If I point up here and say jump, jump, it jumps up here. <laughs> if I point up here and say jump, jump, it jumps over here. Here, everybody say jump. Yeah. Jumps right off the rope. That's Cool? Yeah. Alright, good. Now I need to get this shit right. Phoebe, stay up here really quick. Come here. 
Yeah, oh, this is all sorts of fucked up. Oh my god, gotcha. Tell the story, Mimi! So. Go back to the stage. That was so good to be back, guys! So, so um, yeah, why are you holding like that? Why not? This is going to your side! Why does it matter? <laughs> Alright, that's a good point. What does it matter? Um, another fun fact we're talking about what I do for a living. I also work on the show My 600 Pound Life. Does anybody watch that? Yeah. Don't tell them that. No. This is a bad show. It's a horrible show, and the things that I've seen. I'm like, what you got to say? I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of nuts. Wait, wait, wait. What? what? You gotta get those baiting scenes, man. Wait, what? I don't watch the fucking show. It seems exploitive. Oh. Yeah, oh, boy, I'm like, I didn't bring up what she was talking about it before. There's you gotta get those baby seeds, and all I can hear in my ear in the walkie. Get that, get it tight. Yeah. Zoom in, zoom in. Get the balls. Yeah. Get, get the. Okay, can you hold this really quick? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, if you're okay, I'll stop. Shit! Fuck. It's your fucking makeup stand somewhere, Zach. Fuck. I got all the hair you Please get in the orderly line next to Zach. All right, those baby seeds, man. That's okay. Volunteer. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Nice and orderly people. Beautiful. Is that everybody? I feel like I gave out more legs and balls than that. How many balls? Raise your hand. One, two, three. I don't fucking care. Okay. A lot. The opportunity is knocking. Now, here's really the gross thing. It is. I don't have any alcohol spray. Oh, I have alcohol wipes. No, hang on. Alright, we're just gonna go for it. No, that's not clean. Yeah, I agree, it's not clean at all. Uh, uh, wipes. He's already going in. Uh, that's an infection right there. That's blood. Yeah. Oh, wash your hands, folks. Now I'm gonna lift these hanging buckets. You're gonna fill with the buckets. It goes one, two, three. Top is the winner, bottom is three. I don't fucking know. You can imagine how this goes. This shit hurts. Here we go. <laughs> Alright guys, if you don't clap for me, I'm not gonna do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
Come forward. Who's the other person? If you don't raise your hand, I don't gotta do this shit anymore. What are you gonna do? Uh, Alright, I give you the choice. I can put the hooks back in my eyes. You can ask a whole horror movie question. What do you want to do? Oh, it seems loud. What's the question? Horror movie! Horror movie? Okay. How many times do you want to get? Wanna get low level or high level? You do not want to talk about that. Alright, we'll go medium. Uh, Many space franchises, no, many horror franchises eventually go into space. Name me three uh, horror villains that ended up in space. Jason. Jason. Everyone, don't say it. It's part of fucking plots. So we got Jason. Well, but here's what we do. We're gonna raise our hands first. Okay, no more. Everybody, there's rules. Okay, put both your hands on the stage. Both your hands. Bend over further. Yeah, that's what we're Okay, so someone's in the lead now. Right. You know the question. I'm going to count down from three. When I say go, first person, both hands up, do a little dance. Why, why not? Get to answer the question. If you answer incorrectly, the other person wins. We're going to go on the fucking show. Two, two, one. Oh, damn, you're almost up. Okay. What are your answers? Jason, Alien, and Hale, and Hellraiser. Okay, does Alien count? Yeah, it counts. Okay. I was looking for a leprechaun, but it's fine. will get weirder and weirder as I find more weird shit to print. So if you have ideas, let me know, and you can win some weird fucking shit. Come to the stage once Are you ready? Okay, good. Come to the stage once again, who makes a noise for Pacey Goodwill? Trap. 
strap, a device used to crush the hopes, dreams, and bones. Ah! Of a small rabbit! But I won't be harming any animals. No, instead I'll be placing it on a very sensitive part of me. No, that's a different show. <laughs> My tongue! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's if you guys really want to see it. Give me a countdown! Thank you so much.